there jellyfishes, my name's Chloe Henderson and welcome to Fluffy Jellyfish. Today's video is long overdue. I'm going to be giving you an update on my praying mantis enclosure, which you can see sort of behind me. And I'm going to be taking you through why I've not given you an update for such a long time and what's happened with the praying mantises that I've had as well as the enclosure itself. Um, introducing you to the new mantis which is in there at the moment and telling you a little bit about what I'm going to be doing with the mantis enclosure and my plans for the future of it. So first off I'm going to talk through some of my personal issues. This is my own little therapy session and if you're not interested in that or don't want to listen to that I'll put a little timestamp here of um, when I continue talking about mantis stuff instead of my own stuff so if you want to skip ahead that's totally fine. So for the past few years I've been dealing with depression and anxiety. I think I've probably always had an anxiety disorder throughout my whole life but it's only sort of recently been diagnosed and I actually know a word for it. Like I have some form of label for what the things I've been feeling are. Um, and with depression I suppose like with most people it comes and goes. There's good times in my life where I don't feel depressed and then worse times where I do feel depressed and living through the current state of the world has been one of those bad times so it's definitely been worse recently but through that it's made me want to take this channel more seriously I've realized how much my animals mean to me of course and it's them that basically get me out of my depression they're the things that keep me going and I know that if I can't get out of bed and you know in the morning or if I'm struggling I have to take care of my pets it's something that I have to do and having that little bit of motivation and that sort of strive to do something for them and to take care of them is what really helps me to keep going and get through some of the blah horrible stuff in my head um, and that realization made me want to make this channel and fluffy jellyfish in general the blogs and the social media and everything that I do with it I want to make it a thing I want to grow it and do more videos, try and get um, better educated myself so I can then share that with you guys, make my pet care as best as I can possibly make it and again share my journey, share everything that I've learned. That's really important to me and that's why you've probably seen more videos here than you would have for the past couple of years where my uploads have been um, basically non-existent. And that's the reason I've not updated you on the Mantis enclosure for such a long time. I film vlog clips every now and then uh, for this, for everything, but I just can't seem to find the motivation or the energy to actually post it. And it's rubbish. I hate feeling it like this. And it's kind of hard to talk about as well, so sorry if this is a little bit all over the place and a bit of a ramble, but I hope you know what I'm trying to say. And if any of this is ringing true for you or you're suffering from similar things and having similar struggles, to reach out to a mental health professional if you can at least reach out to friends and family try and reach out to someone try and get support <laughs> i should really take my own advice because i struggle to do that a lot and i know it's hard but if you can try and reach out for some support because it really makes a difference um and yeah i should definitely take my own advice because it is hard it's hard to reach out for help sometimes but luckily for me, I always know that I've got my animals and they make everything so much better and even on the days where I can't take care of myself, I can take care of them and coming up here to the pet room, hanging out with the rats, feeding Elvis and just making plans to make their lives better and now that I'm starting to work on these videos again, like making plans to try and make interesting videos and come up with exciting things is just making me feel a lot happier and I'm trying my best to not give in to the poor mental health and the side of myself that's not so great and I don't like so much. Um, I'm trying my best to stick to a regular upload schedule and trying to schedule myself a bit better so I can get into routines and patterns and trying to get all the sort of creative things that are inside my head instead of just having them like <laughs> go around in my mind all the time and not doing anything with them. I'm trying to actually get them out. So if you want to see that kind of thing more, you should hit that subscribe button. <laughs> uh, that was probably the worst plug I've ever done for my subscribe button, but yeah, subscribe. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the actual 
topic of the video, the thing that we're here to talk about today, which is the mantis enclosure. Um, so, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going to start with a little bit of bad news. I think the last updates video that you saw was an introduction to Nebula and I upgraded um, the enclosure to have live plants in it. I think that was the last updates that I posted. So unfortunately since then Nebula passed away um, and unfortunately I can't even tell you that it was happy because she didn't quite reach her natural lifespan. She unfortunately on her last molt molted badly, she fell from her molt and unfortunately didn't recover. And I do have some vlog clips of Nebula, so I'm gonna insert them here just now. So here's the vlog of Nebula. In my last set of updates, which if you haven't seen it already, I'll link down in the description below and it'll be up in the iCard so you can go and check that out if you want to. But we'd left off where I had basically just picked up Nebula um, and I'd redone the mantis enclosure, I'd rebuilt it, uh, there's a whole video all about it so you can go and check that out. So the enclosure was ready but Nebula was living in a small jar just until she had grown big enough to be able to fit into the larger enclosure and it would be more comfortable in that space. So as you can see here this is me transferring her in her bigger form after a couple of molts into the full size Exoterra so that, that was really exciting. And as you can see, I've got a lot of different plants in there. Um, and this is probably the most aesthetic that my uh, mantis enclosure has ever looked. Since then, I've learned that perhaps the overuse of the plants and having too many things in there was to the detriment of my mantis. When you're designing your mantis enclosure, you want to have a big gap in the middle where they can hang down and molt from. And I had left a big gap, but sort of realised through conversations with other people that I kept mantises that even if you do leave them a massive gap, they still sometimes pick stupid places to molt from. And I think that's basically what happened to Nebula in the end, is that she picked somewhere that wasn't great to molt from and unfortunately fell from her molt and d didn't make it. And I wish I didn't have to learn from this mistake because it wasn't a great one. But I suppose we all have to learn from somewhere and I thought I was doing the right thing trying to provide her with lots of plants and as, as naturalistic an enclosure as I could and I thought I was doing the right thing but unfortunately it turns out that I wasn't and I've learned from that and I've learned the hard way unfortunately. Part of the reason why I'm making these videos is hopefully you'll learn from my mistakes and not make them. But in saying that I do believe Nebula had a good life with me. It was her last molt that she unfortunately passed on and I, up until then I think she had a good life. I provided her with great humidity, perfect temperatures and the enclosure, while not ideal for molting, I think was a really good place for her to explore and to be able to catch her prey in. So while I've made a lot of updates and changes to my care, I still want to provide as best a space as possible. Having the live plants, having things for my mantis to explore and yeah, still trying to make it as naturalistic as possible, but also temper it slightly, I suppose, to make sure that she can't or my future mantises can't pick stupid places to like molt from and potentially fall. So the sticks are more closely on the side, like on the glass, so they're able to move from the top to the bottom, the plants don't overreach too far, and I've not had a great track record with the plants, as you can probably tell from my guide, uh, my plant videos that I'm making. Um, but updating the plants and updating that side of my care is something I plan to do after Rocket has passed on. Uh, so that'll be coming up in a much later video, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But I'm sorry little Nebula, I'm sorry I made the mistakes that I did, I really thought I was doing the best that I could with my care, but it turns out there's always something to learn and I've learned from my mistakes and I hope to be able to provide all of my future mantises with a much better enclosure. And I hope you're enjoying chasing all of the flies up over the rainbow bridge. On the flip side however, I do have a new mantis to introduce you to. So we're going to go through some vlog clips of you guys meeting Rocket, so enjoy! So Rocket was the first animal that I've ever had shipped in the post, with the exception of some feeder insects like dubia roaches and crickets. So I was really nervous and I don't, I still don't really know how I feel about live animals being shipped in the post. Um, but I got Rocket during pandemic times, so doing it through the post was kind of the only option if I wanted to have a mantis. And luckily everything went fine, uh, Rocket arrived perfectly okay, as did the 
isopods that I'd ordered and the springtails and I'd ordered some Dubier roaches as well. And yeah, everything arrived okay and I enjoyed doing this unboxing, it was so exciting. And yeah, it was just like the best little present that I've ever bought for myself. So it was it was really fun and I really enjoyed getting Rocket. I always forget uh, by the time that my mantises grow to their full adult size how tiny they were to start with. So having Rocket in their tiny little baby state like this was so adorable and I always forget how little they are. Luckily Rocket wasn't tiny enough that I had to put them in a jar like I did with Nebula initially. They were big enough to go straight into the uh, Exoterra and I could control what they were eating with feeding tongs just to make sure that they were getting a good amount of food. Um, and I would still release a few flies in there as well so they could use their natural instincts and their prey drive to actually hunt their own little flies but I was still making sure that they were eating enough. And one of the things that I enjoy so much about having a mantis is watching them molt, watching them go through their stages of life. And there's a bunch of clips here with different stages of rocket in molt. And it's just so fascinating to watch and I keep all of my mantis molts. I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. They are all just muddled up in a box together. But I do keep them because I think they're really fascinating. So if you've got any ideas for me of what to do with all my molts, do drop me a comment down below and let me know. I, yeah, it feels weird to throw them out and they're just like really weird and cool looking. So yeah, I've got this little box of just mantis molts um, and I need to figure out what to do with them at some point. They're just fascinating little creatures and I love watching them and having Rocket has been so much fun. Unfortunately, the plants in the enclosure have not done as well as Rocket has. Um, and the pothos is doing great and it's like one of the hardy ones and I guess is <laughs> easy to not kill so that one's doing okay but the two phytonias, phytonias? I can't remember what they're called but those ones down the bottom they just didn't do well at all so as I said earlier I've got a bunch of plans to update this enclosure and update it to be good for the plants as well as the animals so soon we'll have some plants that will actually survive in my mantis enclosure. That'll be a whole other video coming up so do make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see what I do to make sure the plants that I'm adding into my enclosures do not suffer a horrible fate. <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to introduce Rocket properly. How <laughs> silly of me. Okay, so Rocket is a Hirajula membra membrachia? Membrachia? I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but I'll stick it on screen just now so you can see. The common name is Giant Asian Mantis, so very similar to what uh, Gamora was, but from Asia rather than Africa. They're in the same genus and they look very, very similar. Some of the coloration is different. Uh, Rocket is basically all green, whereas uh, Gamora had the red underbelly and the red under her and she had the red on her leg and I think a little bit bigger as well. Um, I can't 100% remember what their leg spans were, or the difference between their leg spans anyway. Rocket ended up being about 7 centimeters. I think was a male in the end as well. Um, didn't end up with wings, so yeah, a male. I'm really rubbish at being able to tell the difference between males and females and that's something I want to work on. I just end up going with they, they, them, because I never figure it out, which is, yeah, bad on my part. I suppose it doesn't really matter in the end because the care is exactly the same whether you've got a male or a female. But yeah, I need to get better at figuring out the differences. But Rocket had a successful move from my parents' house to this house and I'm really enjoying their company. They're a fantastic little mantis and very inquisitive. The plants, on the other hand, not doing so well, so as I said, I'm gonna be updating them at some point, but Rocket's doing perfectly. Getting to the end of their life slightly, um, not eating as much food, and I feel like they might not have that long left with us, but I'll be happy in the knowledge that they're getting really old, like they're at the end of their lifespan, so. Yeah, we've had a good long time with Rocket and I've really enjoyed their company so far. And Rocket would like to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Mantis updates in the future. <laughs> Little plug there from my Mantis friend. So I hope you enjoyed meeting Rocket and Rocket is still doing really well despite the plants in the enclosure really not doing well. <laughs> So I'm going to talk a little bit now about our plans for the enclosure, what I want to do differently and how I'm going to stop being horrible to the plants that live in there. <laughs> Since we moved into this house and obviously moved the location of this enclosure, the two plants at the bottom, which were the two phytonias, I think they're called, 
Um, they just were like, no, we don't like this at all, and they both just went uh, completely, <laughs> completely died. Um, the pothos at the top is still doing okay, it's not put out any new leaves, so it's probably not completely happy, but it's not um, dying, the leaves seem to be healthy, the leaves that are there, so at least that one's doing okay. Um, so I want to buy a daylight lamp, a lamp that's specifically for the plants, um, and it will basically help them to grow and help them not to die. And I also figured it would be good for Rocket as well. Um, while all the care guides say like lighting's not that important, I feel like it probably is. I don't know enough to know, I don't have any research behind the words that I'm saying, but I think the um, in invertebrates in general, the care guides are probably not that great. Um, a lot of people disagree and <laughs> agree on all different types of points. So with any pet, obviously do your research and do your research in multiple locations. Um, because one person might say one thing, one person might say another, and it's up to you to try and decide what works best and try and get all of this different information and collate it into one and be like, okay, this is the thing that I'm going to do. Most people have said this or this sounds right. Um, and that's kind of how we learn and how we grow as individuals and as a community. Um, but in a lot of care guides for invertebrates, lighting and heating, not really discussed all that much. There's normally average temperatures um, that you have to meet for most species, but lighting certainly never really discussed unless you have planted enclosures like this um, and people then talk about it for the plants. And that's what prompted me to start thinking about that in general because I'm like, mm, the plants aren't doing very well so I definitely need a light for this enclosure. But then I'm like, hmm, if the plants aren't doing well, maybe the mantis isn't doing well either. So I'm gonna do some research into that and hopefully try and find some answers, maybe for the next video. Because I definitely think there's a lot of neglect in the invertebrate community. People are like, oh, it's a bug, I'll just stick it in a box and it'll be fine. And I think we should strive harder than that, try and do better for our pets. Um, and I'm sure most people agree, I hope, hopefully you agree when you're watching this video and you're like, yes, we should do better for our pets, do as well as we can. Because um, it's difficult with invertebrates because you don't know how they're feeling. There's no, or there probably is behavioural clues, but we as humans are terrible at picking up on them. So if they're sick or if they're not happy, it's really difficult for us to know. And then maybe one day they're just suddenly dead and it's like, oh, well, that's awful, but I don't know why. And of course we want to try and avoid that as much as possible. So I think it's really important to strive to do better. And I really want to do better um, for Rocket, for any mantises I have in the future, any other invertebrates I have in the future. So we're going to start with lighting and see how much of a difference it makes for the plants, of course, but for Rocket as well. Maybe she'll be more active, perhaps um, see increased movement or decreased movement, or she'll stick to one spot in the enclosure. Perhaps she'll require more feeding. I really don't know. I'm interested to see what happens and I'm interested to do a bit more research and maybe there are other people out there, if you're one of these people that knows about lighting and heat sources and how to adequately provide for invertebrates, do drop me some comments down below, especially if you've got any links to any research or um, care guides that aren't just like care guides written by pet stores because they're rubbish. <laughs> um, I realise that this video is rambly and it's me not knowing what I'm talking about, which is quite often what my videos are. So <laughs> if you enjoy that kind of rambly, don't know what someone's talking about, then hit that subscribe button. <laughs> but it's more that this is my learning journey. I'm learning as I'm talking, I'm learning as I'm doing, and hopefully you're learning along with me. And it's helping you to question perhaps your own care and question whether you need to do better or if there's stuff that you need to change. And hopefully together we can figure it out and hopefully we can have pets that are thriving, not just surviving. Um, and I really want Rocket to do awesome in her enclosure and I want her to have an enclosure that's not full of dead plants. 
I mean, I'm sure the um, cleanup crew in there is loving the fact that these plants have died because they've got lots to work on and lots to eat. Um, but it's not great for uh, Rocket, although I suppose she probably doesn't care whether the plants are dead or not as long as she gets fed. But yeah, I want it to be better, so in the next video that I do, I will be... I've ordered my light, um, I've ordered my hygrometer and thermometer, the digital one that I talked about, and I've ordered some new plants as well, so fingers crossed these ones will make it, and I'll be doing an updates video sometime soon with that, I'll let you know how that goes. So that'll probably come out in perhaps a few weeks to a month, I'll probably film it over the next few weeks and it'll come out in about a month's time once I've seen how everything works and observe the enclosure for a little bit. But if you want to have more regular updates and if you want to see um, some updates closer to that then you can follow me on Instagram at Fluffy Jellyfish Chloe and Twitter at Fluffy Fish Jelly. I know it's a weird one on Twitter, someone had stolen my name already. Um, and I'm also on TikTok at Fluffy Jellyfish Chloe as well. So you can check out my socials and they're all linked in the description below and I'll probably be posting some updates to the enclosure and how it's getting on with it. But if you want to stick with me on YouTube then do hit that subscribe button because soon I will obviously update you with how the Mantis enclosure has gone. So that'll be really exciting and I'm looking forward to that. I love buying new stuff for the pets. It's definitely like one of my pleasures in life. I don't buy stuff for myself very often. I don't really treat myself that often. But buying stuff for the pets is like my favourite thing to do. Like I've just ordered some new hammocks for the rats and I'm so excited for them to arrive already. Ooh, that could be an unboxing video. Do you want to see me unbox some hammocks? Drop me a comment down below and let me know because I will film that, that might be quite fun. But I think I've rambled enough for this video. I've talked a lot and a lot of it has been all over the place. So thanks for sticking with me. And if you've got any thoughts on any of the things that I've said, do drop me some comments down below. I'd love some further reading. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on invertebrate care and praying mantis care. I think it'd be really interesting to hear what you guys think. So yeah, drop me some comments. I want some further reading. <laughs> but that's all for me for today. And I hope you've enjoyed this random rambly video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.